Cabinet of Donald Trump, Wikipedia article audio. This article lists the members of President Donald Trump's cabinet. Trump assumed office on January 20, 2017. The President of the United States has the authority to nominate members of their cabinet to the United States Senate for confirmation under Appointments Clause of the United States Constitution. Before confirmation and during congressional hearings, a high-level career member of an executive department heads this pre-confirmed cabinet on an acting basis. The cabinet's creation is part of the transition of power following the 2016 United States presidential election. Announced nominees Cabinet members this page documents the confirmation process for any successful or unsuccessful cabinet nominees of Donald Trump's administration. They are listed in order of creation of the cabinet position. All members of the cabinet require the advice and consent of the United States Senate following appointment by the president prior to taking office. The vice presidency is exceptional in that the position requires election to office pursuant to the United States Constitution. Although some are afforded cabinet-level rank, non-cabinet members within the executive office of the president, such as White House Chief of Staff, National Security Advisor, and White House Press Secretary, do not hold constitutionally created positions and most do not require Senate confirmation for appointment. The following have been named as cabinet appointees by the President. For other high-level positions, see the list of Donald Trump political appointments. Due to President Trump's lack of government or military experience and his political positions, much interest existed among the media over his cabinet nominations, as they were believed to show how he intended to govern. President Trump's proposed cabinet was characterized by the media as being very conservative. It was described as a conservative dream team by Politico, the most conservative cabinet by Newsweek, and one of the most consistently conservative domestic policy teams in modern history by the Los Angeles Times. The Hill described Mr. Trump's potential cabinet as an unorthodox team popular with conservatives, that more establishment Republicans such as John McCain or Mitt Romney likely would not have chosen. CNN agreed calling the proposed cabinet a conservative dream team of domestic cabinet appointments. On the other hand, the Wall Street Journal stated that it's nearly impossible to identify a clear ideological bent in the incoming president's cabinet nominations. Cabinet-level officials the Wall Street Journal also stated that Mr. Trump's nominations signaled a pro-deregulation administration policy. Several of his cabinet nominees politically opposed the federal departments they were selected to lead. In terms of total personal wealth, Mr. Trump's cabinet is the wealthiest in modern American history. Confirmation Process Timeline President Trump's cabinet is largely made up of nominees who have business experience but minimal experience in the government when compared to the administrations of Ronald Reagan, George H. W. Bush, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush and Barack Obama. The Pew Research Center also noted that Mr. Trump's cabinet is one of the most business-heavy in American history. The think tank stated that a third of the department heads in the Trump administration will be people whose prior experience has been entirely in the public sector. Only three other presidents are in the same range, William McKinley, Ronald Reagan, and Dwight Eisenhower. There are no economists in President Trump's cabinet. There are also significantly fewer lawyers in Mr. Trump's cabinet than in previous administrations. Despite being nominated promptly during the transition period, 
most cabinet members were unable to take office on Inauguration Day because of delays in the formal confirmation process. By February 8, 2017, President Trump had fewer cabinet nominees confirmed than any prior president two weeks into his mandate, except George Washington. Part of the lateness was ascribed to opposition by Senate Democrats and part to delays in submitting background check paperwork. The last cabinet member, Robert Lighthizer, took office as U.S. Trade Representative on May 11, 2017, more than four months after his nomination. Analysis Choosing members of the presidential cabinet is a complicated process, which begins prior to the November 2016 general election results being known. In the case of the Trump 2016 campaign, his former rival for the Republican nomination Chris Christie was appointed to lead the transition team in May 2016, shortly after Ted Cruz and John Kosich suspended their campaigns. In addition to various other responsibilities, the transition team is responsible for making preliminary lists of potential executive branch appointees at least for the several dozen high-level positions if not for the several thousand lower-level positions and doing some early vetting work on those people. The transition team also hires policy experts, using primarily federal funds and federal office space to help plan how the hypothetical at-the-time future Trump administration will implement their policy goals via the various federal agencies and departments. Confirmation Delays After the election in November 2016, when the ticket formed by Trump and Pence defeated the Clinton and Kane ticket as well as various third-party opponents, the transition team was quickly reshuffled and expanded. Mike Pence was given the lead role, and several additional top-level transition personnel were added to the transition effort, most of them from the now-finished campaign effort. During the remainder of 2016, the team continued finding and vetting potential nominees for the various positions, as the electoral college process was ongoing and prior to the presidential inauguration in January 2017. History President-elect Trump announced his first post-election cabinet nominee, Jeff Sessions for the role of United States Attorney General, on November 18, 2016. Although most positions were simultaneously under consideration by the transition team, the official announcement of offers, and the public acceptance of the offers, usually happens gradually as slots are filled. For purposes of historical comparison, this chart only includes cabinet roles, and not the cabinet-level positions. However, Note that the number of cabinet positions has varied from administration to administration, under Nixon there were 12 such roles in 1968, whereas under Trump in 2016 there are 15. Formation After Trump had been president for a full three weeks, the number of his approved cabinet members stood at seven as compared to twelve for Obama and no vacancies for George W. Bush. Whereas all but one cabinet nominee was approved in less than a day for President Bill Clinton. After Election Day, media outlets reported on persons described by various sources as possible appointments to senior positions in the incoming Trump presidency. The number of people which have received media attention as potential cabinet appointees is higher than in most previous presidential elections, partly because the Trump 16 campaign staff was significantly smaller and less expensive, thus there are not as many people already expected to receive specific roles in the upcoming Trump administration. In particular, 
Trump has a smaller policy brain trust than a new president normally carries because as an anti-establishment candidate who began his campaign by largely self-funding his way to the Republican Party nomination, unlike most previous presidential winners Trump does not have the traditional cotter of Washington insiders and donors to build out his cabinet. An additional factor that tends to make the field of potential nominees especially broad, is that unlike most presidential transition teams who select politicians as their appointees, the Trump transition team has started with a mandate to hire from the private sector whenever possible. There were dozens of potential running mates for Trump who received media speculation. Trump's eventual pick of Governor Mike Pence of Indiana was officially announced on July 16, 2016 and confirmed by acclamation via parliamentary procedure amongst delegates to the 2016 Republican National Convention on July 19, 2016. The following cabinet positions are listed in order of their creation. The nomination of a secretary-designate is reviewed during hearings held by the members of the Foreign Relations Committee, then presented to the full Senate for a vote. Vice President On December 12, 2016, Rex Tillerson, CEO of ExxonMobil, was officially selected to be the Secretary of State. Tillerson was first recommended to Trump for the Secretary of State role by Condoleezza Rice, during her meeting with Trump in late November. Rice's recommendation of Tillerson to Trump was backed up by Robert Gates three days later. Cabinet Tillerson's confirmation hearing with the Foreign Relations Committee was held on January 11, 2017. During the hearing, Tillerson voiced support for the Trans-Pacific Partnership and opposed a Muslim immigration ban that has been proposed by Donald Trump in the past. Tillerson was approved by the Foreign Relations Committee on January 23, 2017 by a vote of 11-10. On Wednesday, February 1, Tillerson was confirmed by the Senate 56-43. Prior to Tillerson's confirmation, Tom Shannon was the acting secretary. On March 13, 2018, Trump dismissed Rex Tillerson as Secretary of State, and announced his nomination of CIA Director Mike Pompeo to the office. The nomination of a secretary-designate is reviewed during hearings held by the members of the Finance Committee then presented to the full Senate for a vote. Trump announced the selection of Steve Nukin as Secretary of the Treasury on November 30, 2016. In the statement, Trump called Nukin a world-class financier, banker, and businessman, and he said Nukin played an important role in developing his plan to build a dynamic, booming economy. Nukin himself said he was honored to have the opportunity to serve our great country in this important role. He called Trump's economic agenda a bold one that creates good-paying jobs and defends the American worker. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson Mike Pompeo Secretary of the Treasury the New York Times noted that Nukin's selection fits uneasily with much of Mr. Trump's campaign attacks on the financial industry. For example, an ad of Trump's campaign said Goldman Sachs CEO had robbed working class. Nukin will be the third Goldman alumnus to serve in the job, after Henry M. Paulson Jr., under President George W. Bush, and Robert E. Rubin under President Bill Clinton in the 2000s and 1990s, respectively. After the nomination was announced, Nukin resigned from his position on the Board of Trustees of the Museum of Contemporary Art, Los Angeles, to which he had donated between $100,000 and $250,000. 
When the pick was announced, Nukin was also a member of the boards of UCLA Health System, the New York Presbyterian Hospital, and the Los Angeles Police Foundation. During his Senate confirmation hearing on January 19, 2017, Nukin was condemned by Democrats due to the foreclosure practices at One West. Nukin said, Since I was first nominated to serve as Treasury Secretary, I have been maligned as taking advantage of others' hardships in order to earn a buck. Nothing could be further from the truth. Nukin was criticized for failing to disclose, in required disclosure documents, $95 million of real estate that he owned and his role as director of Dune Capital International, an investment fund in a tax haven. Nukin described the omissions as mistakes made amid a mountain of bureaucracy. Democrats of the Senate Finance Committee boycotted the vote of Nukin and many other nominees in response to Trump's controversial immigration executive order. Additionally, Democrats sought an additional hearing due to Nukin's failure to disclose $100 million in assets. On February 1, 2017, Republicans suspended committee rules to send the nomination to the Senate floor. His nomination was approved by a vote of 11-0. Steve Nukin was confirmed on February 13, 2017. As expected, the Senate vote fell along party lines, with exception of Senator Joe Manchin as the sole Democratic vote for Nukin. Adam Subin served as acting secretary prior to Nukin's confirmation. The nomination of a secretary designate is reviewed during hearings held by the members of the Armed Services Committee, then presented to the full Senate for a vote. Trump informally announced the selection of General Jim Mattis as Secretary of Defense on December 1, 2016. As with most cabinet roles, the Secretary Designate of Defense undergoes hearings before the appropriate Committee of the United States Senate, followed by a confirmation vote. In the case of Mattis, there was an additional step needed as he had retired from the military three years ago, since Statute Section 903 of the NDAA demands a minimum of seven years as a civilian for Pentagon appointees. Therefore Mattis needed a waiver to be allowed to become Secretary of Defense. Steve Nukin During his hearing, Mattis agreed with the assessment that debt was the greatest threat to national security. He placed Russia first among the principal threats facing the United States and called Iran the primary source of turmoil for unrest in the Middle East. In contrast with Trump's campaign promises, Mattis advocated for maintaining NATO and keeping the Iran nuclear deal. He urged for a clear cybersecurity doctrine to be implemented. On January 12, 2017 the Senate Armed Services Committee voted 24-3 to grant the waiver. The full Senate voted 81-17 to pass the waiver three hours later. After the Trump transition team cancelled a meeting between Mattis and the House Armed Services Committee, the waiver narrowly passed the committee by a vote of 34-28. The House voted 268-151 to grant the waiver. The Senate Armed Services Committee approved Mattis' confirmation on January 18, 2017 by a 26-1 margin and sent the nomination to the full Senate for consideration. One of Donald Trump's first acts as president was the approval of Mattis' waiver to become Secretary of Defense. After being confirmed by the Senate on the evening of January 20, 2017 by a vote of 98-1, Mattis was sworn in on the same evening. The nomination of an attorney general designate is reviewed during hearings held by the members of the Judiciary Committee, then presented to the full Senate for a vote. Secretary of Defense 
Jim Mattis Attorney General On January 30, 2017, Trump appointed Dana Boent, the United States Attorney for the Eastern District of Virginia, to serve as Acting Attorney General until Jeff Sessions' Senate confirmation. Bowen had replaced Sally Yates who was fired by Trump for ordering the Justice Department to not defend Trump's Executive Order 13769 which restricted entry to the United States. Yates claimed that, at present, I am not convinced that the defense of the executive order is consistent with these responsibilities, nor am I convinced that the executive order is lawful. Bowen served until the confirmation of Jeff Sessions on February 9, 2017. Trump's selection of Senator Jeff Sessions from Alabama was officially announced on November 18, 2016. Members of the Democratic Party in the Senate had stated their intention to oppose Sessions, that said, successfully defeating the nomination of Sessions would have required peeling away the votes of at least two or three Republican members of the Senate body. Republican members of the Judiciary Committee spoke favorably towards Sessions, as Sessions had been a former member of the Judiciary Committee while serving as Senator. Although Democratic Party senators, including Elizabeth Warren, criticized Sessions, at least one Democratic senator, Joe Manchin of West Virginia, stated he would vote to confirm Sessions. Historically, there has never been a sitting senator appointed to cabinet position who was denied that post during the confirmation process. The confirmation process for Trump's nominee Senator Jeff Sessions was described as strikingly contentious by The New York Times, as Senator Mitch McConnell invoked Rule 19 to silence Senator Elizabeth Warren for the rest of the consideration of the nomination. McConnell interrupted Warren as she had read a letter by Coretta Scott King opposing Sessions' nomination to a federal judgeship along with several statements which were made by Senator Ted Kennedy in 1986 during Senate hearings on Sessions' nomination. Afterwards, Warren live-streamed herself reading the letter, critical of Sessions, that Coretta Scott King had written to Senator Strom Thurmond in 1986. On February 8, Sessions, was confirmed as United States Attorney General by a vote of 52-47, with all of the Republican Senators and Democratic Senator Joe Manchin voting in favor of Sessions' confirmation and all other Senators voting against Sessions' confirmation. Sessions' confirmation ended a nomination battle which was described by the New York Times as bitter and racially charged. Acting Attorney General The nomination of a secretary-designate is reviewed during hearings held by the members of the Energy and Natural Resources Committee, then presented to the full Senate for a vote. On December 9, 2016, Kathy McMorris Rogers of Washington was originally selected for the role, according to anonymous leaks within the Trump transition team. However, instead Ryan Zinka was reportedly offered the role of Secretary of the Interior on December 13, 2016. Trump's transition team formally announced the decision to nominate Zinka on December 15, 2016. His nomination was approved by a 16-6 vote from the Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee on January 31. 2017. Zinka was confirmed on March 1, 2017 by a vote of 68-31, becoming the first Navy SEAL to occupy a cabinet position. Prior to Zinka's confirmation, Kevin Haugard served as the Acting Secretary of the Interior. The nomination of a secretary-designate is reviewed during hearings held by the members of the Agriculture, Nutrition and Forestry Committee, then presented to the full Senate for a vote. On January 18, 
2017 Sonny Perdue, former governor of Georgia, was selected to be the Secretary of Agriculture. On April 24, 2017 Purdue was confirmed by the Senate in an 87-11 vote. Prior to Purdue's confirmation the acting Secretary of Agriculture was Michael Skews. The nomination of a secretary-designate is reviewed during hearings held by the members of the Commerce, Science and Transportation Committee, then presented to the full Senate for a vote. Trump's selection of CEO Wilbur Ross from Florida was officially announced on November 30, 2016. Several days earlier starting November 24, unofficial staff interviews said that Ross either would be, or was expected to be, offered the role. Confirmation hearings were originally scheduled for January 12 but were postponed because the Commerce Committee had not yet received the ethics agreement from the Office of Government Ethics and the Department of Commerce. On February 27, 2017, he was confirmed by the United States Senate in a 72-27 vote. He assumed office on February 28, 2017. The nomination of a secretary-designate is reviewed during hearings held by the members of the Health, Education, Labor and Pensions Committee, then presented to the full Senate for a vote. On December 8, 2016 Andy Puzder, CEO of CKE Restaurants, was officially selected to be the Secretary of Labor. The Health, Education, Labor and Pensions Committee delayed Puzder's hearing five times due to missing paperwork from the Office of Government Ethics. It was revealed that prior to the nomination Puzder employed a housekeeper who was not authorized to work in the U.S. Puzder failed to pay employer taxes. Puzder fired the housekeeper and amended his taxes only after his nomination. Prior cabinet nominations from the Bush and Clinton administrations with undocumented housekeepers have had to withdraw their nominations. Jeff Sessions Secretary of the Interior On February 8, 2017 the Office of Government Ethics submitted Puzder's ethics paperwork to Congress. It was also revealed Puzder's ex-wife Lisa Fierstein appeared in disguise on Oprah Winfrey's talk show in the 1980s. In the interview, she alleged Puzder beat her. She later recanted. Fierstein sent a letter to Congress shortly after his nomination stating, Andy is not and was not abusive or violent. Complying with the HELP Committee, the Oprah Winfrey Network produced tapes from the interview for members of the committee to view. Four Republican senators from the HELP Committee Susan Collins, Tim Scott, Johnny Isaacson and Lisa Murkowski expressed doubt over Puzder's nomination. On February 15, 2017 reports surfaced that Puzder would withdraw his nomination, a day before his scheduled hearing. Later that day Puzder released a statement to the Associated Press officially withdrawing his nomination. On February 16, 2017 Alex Acosta Dean of the Florida International University College of Law and former Justice Department attorney, was officially selected to be the Secretary of Labor. On April 27, 2017, Acosta was confirmed by the Senate in a 60-38 vote. Prior to Acosta's confirmation the acting Secretary of Labor was Ed Hugler. Ryan Zinka Although historically the nominee also holds meetings with the Health, Education, Labor and Pensions Committee, officially the nomination of a secretary-designate is reviewed during hearings held by the members of the United States Senate Committee on Finance, then presented to the full Senate for a vote. Secretary of Agriculture Sonny Perdue 
Secretary of Commerce Wilbur Ross Secretary of Labor Failed nomination of Andy Puzder Alex Acosta Secretary of Health and Human Services Tom Price Alex Azar Secretary of Housing and Urban Development Ben Carson Secretary of Transportation Elaine Chow Trump's selection of Rep. Tom Price from Georgia was officially announced on November 28, 2016. Members of the Democratic Party in the Senate such as Debbie Stabenow, Brian Schatz and Sherrod Brown have stated their intention to oppose this nominee. However, successfully blocking the nomination would have required the support of at least two Republican members of the full body, which was expected to have a partisan split. Price was confirmed by the Senate on February 10, 2017 in a 52-47 vote along party lines, with all Republicans voting in favor and all Democrats voting against. Prior to Price's confirmation, the Acting Secretary of Health and Human Services was Norris Cochran. Price resigned on September 29, 2017, amid a charter flight scandal. Price is the shortest-serving confirmed Secretary of Health and Human Services, with a tenure of just 231 days. Trump designated Don J. Wright, and then later on October 10, 2017, Eric Hargan as acting United States Secretary of Health and Human Services until a new nominee is confirmed. On November 13, 2017, President Trump announced via Twitter that Alex Azar was his nominee to be the next HHS Secretary to succeed Acting Secretary Eric Hargan. Azar was the former Deputy Secretary of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services under George W. Bush and President of Lilly USA, LLC, the largest affiliate of global biopharmaceutical leader Eli Lilly and Company from 2012-2017. Azar was confirmed by 53-43 vote on January 24, 2018. He took office on January 29, 2018. The nomination of a secretary-designate is reviewed during hearings held by the members of the Banking, Housing and Urban Affairs Committee, then presented to the full Senate for a vote. On December 5, 2016, President-elect Donald Trump announced that he would nominate Ben Carson to the position of Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. During confirmation hearings, Carson was held under close scrutiny for his lack of relevant experience, and because he has been one of the most hostile critics of HUD's role in enforcing anti-discrimination laws. On January 24, 2017, the Senate Banking Committee voted unanimously to approve the nomination, sending it to the Senate floor for a complete vote. On March 2, 2017, Carson was confirmed by the United States Senate in a 58-41 vote. Prior to Carson's nomination, Craig Clemenson served as the Acting Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. The nomination of a secretary-designate is reviewed during hearings held by the members of the Commerce, Science and Transportation Committee, then presented to the full Senate for a vote. On November 29, 2016 it was reported that President-elect Trump selected former United States Secretary of Labor Elaine Chow of Kentucky as his Secretary of Transportation. On January 31, Chow was confirmed by the Senate by a vote of 93-6. Her husband Senator Mitch McConnell only voted present due to the conflict of interest. Prior to Chow's confirmation the acting Secretary of Transportation was Michael Huerta.
The nomination of a secretary designate is reviewed during hearings held by the members of the Energy and Natural Resources Committee, then presented to the full Senate for a vote. On December 13, 2016 Rick Perry, former governor of Texas, was selected to be the Secretary of Energy. During a previous presidential campaign, Perry said he intended to abolish the department. His nomination was approved by a 16-7 vote from the United States Senate Committee on Energy and Natural Resources on January 31, 2017. On March 2, 2017, Perry was confirmed by the United States Senate in a 62-37 vote. Prior to Perry's confirmation, the acting Secretary of Energy was Grace Bochnack. The nomination of a secretary-designate is reviewed during hearings held by the members of the Health, Education, Labor and Pensions Committee, then presented to the full Senate for a vote. Trump's selection of former RNC member Betsy DeVos from Michigan was officially announced on November 23, 2016. Originally scheduled for January 11, but was postponed because the Office of Government Ethics had not completed its review of Devo's financial holdings and potential conflicts of interest. On January 20, the Office of Government Ethics completed their ethics report on Devo's, three days after her hearing with the Committee on Health, Education, Labor and Pensions was held. The completion of the report prompted the delay of her scheduled committee vote to January 31. Senate Democrats had requested a second hearing for Devos to committee chair Senator Lamar Alexander, which he denied. Devos has repeatedly said that she will divest from 102 companies within 90 days if confirmed. On February 7, 2017, the full Senate voted 51-50 with Vice President Pence casting the tie-breaking vote to confirm Devos, with Pence becoming the first Vice President in U.S. history to cast the tie-breaking vote for a cabinet nominee, since Henry A. Wallace having his confirmation tie broken by Truman. Prior to Devos' confirmation, Phil Rosenfeld served as the Acting Secretary of Education. The nomination of a secretary-designate is reviewed during hearings held by the members of the Veterans Affairs Committee, then presented to the full Senate for a vote. On January 11, 2017 David Shulkin, the Under-Secretary of Veterans Affairs for Health under President Barack Obama, was selected to be the Secretary of Veterans Affairs. He was later confirmed by the Senate by a 100-0 vote. Prior to Shulkin's confirmation, Robert Snyder served as the Acting Secretary of Veterans Affairs. The nomination of a secretary-designate is reviewed during hearings held by the members of the Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee, then presented to the full Senate for a vote. On December 7, 2016, John F. Kelly, retired four-star Marine General, was selected to be the Secretary of Homeland Security. He was confirmed by the Senate with a vote of 88-11 and sworn in on the evening of January 20. Kelly's term ended on July 28, 2017, following his appointment as White House Chief of Staff. He was succeeded by Elaine Duke as Acting Homeland Security Secretary. On October 11, 2017, multiple sources reported Trump's interest in nominating Kirstjen Nielsen as Secretary of Homeland Security. She had served as Principal Deputy White House Chief of Staff to Chief of Staff John F. Kelly. On December 5, 2017, the Senate confirmed her nomination, by a 62-37 vote. Cabinet-level officials have positions that are considered to be of cabinet level, but which are not part of the cabinet. 
which exact positions are considered part of the presidential cabinet, can vary with the president. The CIA and FEMA were cabinet-level agencies under Bill Clinton, but not George W. Bush. The head of the Office of National Drug Control Policy was a cabinet-level position under both Bill Clinton and George W. Bush, but not under Barack Obama. Designation of an agency as being cabinet-level requires that Congress enact legislation, although executive orders unilaterally created by the President can be used to create many other types of position inside the executive branch. Members of the cabinet proper, as well as cabinet-level officials, meet with the President in a room adjacent to the Oval Office. The White House Chief of Staff has traditionally been the highest-ranking employee of the White House. The responsibilities of the Chief of Staff are both managerial and advisory over the President's business. The Chief of Staff is appointed by and serves at the pleasure of the President, it does not require Senate confirmation. Trump's selection of former RNC Chair Reince Priebus from Wisconsin was officially announced on November 13, 2016. This role does not require Senate confirmation. The appointment of Steve Bannon as chief strategist was announced simultaneously. Although that strategy role is not a cabinet-level position in the statutory sense, in an unusual arrangement Priebus and Bannon were envisioned by the Trump transition team as being equal partners, and were announced simultaneously. With Priebus accepting a role within the administration, Ronna Romney McDaniel was elected to replace Priebus in his former role as RNC chair. Priebus resigned on July 28, 2017. On July 28, 2017 Trump announced his Secretary for Homeland Security, John Kelly, would serve as his Chief of Staff. The nomination of a director-designate is reviewed during hearings held by the members of the United States Senate Committee on Finance then presented to the full Senate for a vote. On January 3, 2017 Robert Lighthizer, a former deputy United States Trade Representative under President Ronald Reagan, was selected to be the United States Trade Representative. Due to Lighthizer's prior representation of foreign governments with a trade dispute with the United States, he will first need to obtain a special waiver to bypass the Lobbying Disclosure Act. The waiver would need to pass Congress and have the President's signature to assume the position. Congress waived the ban for Charlene Barshevsky, President Clinton's choice for trade representative in 1997. Lighthizer was confirmed as U.S. Trade Representative on May 11, 2017, by a margin of 8214. Prior to Lighthizer's confirmation, Maria Pagan and Stephen Vaughn served as acting trade representative. On February 8, 2017 President Trump outlined the 24 members of the cabinet with the Director of National Intelligence being newly included. The nomination of an director-designate is reviewed during hearings held by the members of the United States Senate Select Committee on Intelligence and then presented to the full Senate for a vote. On January 7, 2017 Dan Coats, former Senator of Indiana, was officially selected to be the Director of National Intelligence. On March 15, 2017 Coates was confirmed by the Senate by a vote of 85-12. Prior to Coates' confirmation, the acting director of National Intelligence was Mike Dempsey. Like all ambassadorships and all official cabinet positions, the nominee for this ambassador to the UN requires confirmation by the Senate. The nomination of an ambassador-designate to the United Nations is reviewed during hearings held by the members of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, and then presented to the full Senate for a vote. 
Trump officially announced Governor Nikki Haley from South Carolina as his selection for this role on November 23, 2016. She was confirmed on January 24, 2017 and subsequently resigned as South Carolina Governor. Haley supported Marco Rubio in the Republican primaries and caucuses, but later endorsed Trump as the presumptive Republican nominee. Haley's lieutenant governor, Henry McMaster, who was an early supporter of Trump, was also under consideration for a role in the Trump administration, but since he did not accept such a role, he succeeded to the governorship of South Carolina upon Haley's resignation. The nomination of a director-designate is reviewed during hearings held by the members of the Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee and Budget Committee then presented to the full Senate for a vote. On December 13, 2016 Mick Mulvaney, U.S. Representative for South Carolina's 5th Congressional District, was selected to be the Director of the Office of Management and Budget. In his statement to the Senate Budget Committee, Mulvaney admitted that he had failed to pay $15,000 in payroll taxes from 2004 for a nanny he had hired to care for his triplets. Mulvaney said he did not pay the taxes because he viewed the woman as a babysitter rather than as a household employee. After filling out a questionnaire from the Trump transition team, he realized the lapse and began the process of paying back taxes and fees. Senate Democrats noted that Republicans had previously insisted that past Democratic nominees' failure to pay taxes for their household employees was disqualifying, including former Health and Human Services nominee Tom Dashley in 2009. Budget Chairman Senator Mike Enzi noted on the Senate floor, According to Senate records from President Jimmy Carter to President Obama, the longest it has ever taken to approve a first budget director for a new president was one week one week. On February 16, 2017, the Senate confirmed Mulvaney, 5149. On February 8, 2017 President Trump outlined the 24 members of the cabinet with the director of the Central Intelligence Agency being newly included. The nomination of an director-designate is reviewed during hearings held by the members of the United States Senate Select Committee on Intelligence and then presented to the full Senate for a vote. On November 18, 2016 Mike Pompeo the representative of Kansas' 4th Congressional District, was officially selected to be the director of the Central Intelligence Agency. He was confirmed by the United States Senate on January 23, 2017, with a vote of 66-32. Pompeo was opposed by 30 Democratic senators while the sole Republican vote against him came from Rand Paul. He was sworn in on the same night by Vice President Mike Pence. On March 13, 2018, Pompeo was named as Secretary-Designate of the State Department following the dismissal of Rex Tillerson. On March 13, 2018, President Donald Trump announced via Twitter that he will nominate Gina Haspel to be the CIA Director which would make her the first female permanent CIA director. The nomination of an administrator-designate is reviewed during hearings held by the members of the Environment and Public Works Committee, then presented to the full Senate for a vote. On December 7, 2016, Scott Pruitt, Attorney General of Oklahoma was selected to be the administrator of the Environmental Protection Agency. In response to the nomination, Pruitt said, I intend to run this agency in a way that fosters both responsible protection of the environment and freedom for American businesses. During his January 18 confirmation hearing, Pruitt's testimony openly acknowledged climate change. 
Pruitt declared the EPA has a very important role in regulating carbon dioxide emissions. Pruitt has sued the Environmental Protection Agency as the Attorney General of Oklahoma on more than a dozen occasions. When pressed by Senator Ed Markey on whether he would recuse himself from ongoing lawsuits, Pruitt would not commit to recusing himself from all the cases he had brought. Pruitt deflected questioning from Senator Bernie Sanders on the issue of whether human activity is largely responsible for climate change. Stating, I believe the ability to measure, with precision, the degree of human activity's impact on the climate is subject to more debate on whether the climate is changing or whether human activity contributes to it. Pruitt declined to comment on whether California could set its own emission standards and said he would review the policy. Prior to Pruitt's confirmation, the acting administrator of the Environmental Protection Agency was Catherine McCabe. The nomination of an administrator designate is reviewed during hearings held by the members of the United States Senate Committee on Small Business and Entrepreneurship and then presented to the full Senate for a vote. On December 7, 2016 Linda McMahon, former CEO of World Wrestling Entertainment Inc. and Senate nominee, was selected to be the head of the Small Business Administration. McMahon was confirmed by a Senate vote of 81-19 on February 14, 2017. Marianne Markowitz served as acting administrator prior to McMahon's confirmation. McMahon earned approval votes from Senators Richard Blumenthal and Chris Murphy from Connecticut, they defeated McMahon in their respective Senate races. Senator Jim Risch chairman of the Senate Committee on Small Businesses and Entrepreneurship, said, Mrs. McMahon made it very clear that she has the experience, understanding and instincts necessary to bolster America's small business community and advocate for much-needed regulatory reforms. On February 8, 2017 President Trump outlined the 24 members of the Cabinet, excluding the Council of Economic Advisers' chairman position. In addition to the chairman, the council had two other members, also appointed by the president, as well as a staff of economists, researchers and statisticians. Historically, appointees to chair the council have held Ph.D.S. in economics, and the role of the group is to provide advice in the form of economic analysis with respect to policy, as distinct from shaping economic policy per SC. Trump released a list of his campaign's official economic advisors in August 2016, which simultaneously was anti-establishment and therefore lean on those with governmental experience yet at the same time aimed to include some members of business and finance. Many of the listed names received media attention as potential appointees to the Council of Economic Advisers, or in other Trump administration roles. Although removed from the cabinet, the chair designate, if nominated, must be reviewed during hearings held by the members of the United States Senate Committee on Banking, Housing and Urban Affairs and then presented to the full Senate for a vote. Various other Trump administration appointees are directly involved with economic matters, for example Director of the National Economic Council Gary Cohn, National Trade Council Director Peter Navarro, SEC Chairman Jay Clayton, OMB Director Mick Mulvaney, Treasury Secretary Stephen Nookin, Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross, U.S. Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer and SBA Administrator Linda McMahon. On May 16, 2017 Trump nominated Dr. Kevin Hassett to be chair of the council. A hearing was held on June 6. Secretary of Energy Rick Perry Secretary of Education Betsy DeVos
Secretary of Veterans Affairs David Shulkin Secretary of Homeland Security John Kelly Kirsten Nielsen Cabinet Level Officials 2 White House Chief of Staff Reince Priebus John Kelly 2 United States Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer Director of National Intelligence Dan Coates Ambassador to the United Nations Nikki Haley Director of the Office of Management and Budget Mick Mulvaney Director of the Central Intelligence Agency Mike Pompeo II Gina Haspel Administrator of the Environmental Protection Agency Scott Pruitt Administrator of the Small Business Administration Linda McMahon Removal of the Chair of the Council of Economic Advisors Notes